horn kind of devices with high frequency horns in the middle in conjunction with the VCS3 since that I had like a stunner badger at 20 places. Dick Mick used to come over and say, see that one guy? Over you go. I would never instigate uh, sonic violence to that degree. But, you know, once someone else starts it, you know, I'll join in. In striking contrast to the band's arsenal of sonic weapons was the arrival of dancer Miss Stacia, who climbed on stage to join the band at a gig at the Flamingo Ballroom in Red Roof. Stacia was all right. She was a petrol pump attendant. We loaded up the petrol, filled up just before a gig. Dell invited to the gig. She came. I think she probably danced that night. Slept with Dell, and three weeks later she was in the band. <laughs> it was very easy to get in our band in those days. <laughs> She was a bookbinder by profession and then she had an uncontrollable urge one night to take all the clothes off and paint herself blue. Which is probably a throwback to the Roman invasion of Britain, you think? Woad, you know. And then she came on the road with us, you know. She was she was really weird, I mean she was great, you know. Blowing bubbles on stage and shit, she was great. I mean she was an impressive woman, I mean she was six foot two. 52 inch bust, you know. I mean, she was a, an overwhelming sight for the youngsters in the crowd. And she used to pull them down again and bring them back to the hotel, you know. I shared a hotel room with her for two tours. It was really fucking funny, you know. See these kids, I thought it was her birthday. And no way it was. <laughs> with the arrival of Stacia and Lemmy, alongside the likes of Robert Calvert, Barney Bubbles and the band's very own lighting crew, Liquid Len and the Lensman. Hawkwind hit their stride as the biggest freak band in the galaxy, galvanized by the unexpected trajectory of Silver Machine, their second single released in June 1972. Silver machine is a push bike, a silver push bike with a silver bell ding a ling a ling, and um, that's what Robert Calvert wrote the song about. He was on his push bike going through London, ringing his bell, and he just thought, "I've got a silver machine." I knew when we were rehearsing it, the place uh, Andy Warhol had hired for a party, he got us to play at it, and I remember thinking then, "Oh, this could really make it. This could really crack it." You know, it just for me was the point where Silver Machine became the important track. I just realized something was going to happen off the back of that. I don't know how many copies it sold, a million copies or something like that. So that was the best selling out record that we ever had. You know, it was available on a commercial level as well. It was in, you know, we were on top of the pops and suddenly, you know, Hawkwind was the flavor of the month, really. So that was quite cool. Dave had the riff and then Bob put the words to it. Um, and that's pretty much how you work with Dave. You didn't really get together like Lennon McCartney and, you know, and, and a couple of guitars. Dave was a very good writer, you know. There was all good songs. Silver Machine brought new pressures to a band that had never had to deal with the business side of music. Well, I mean, hit records always change the dynamic of a group because the guy who wrote the song is suddenly making a lot of more money than everybody else. And then also that there's the guy who sang the song is suddenly in the spotlight. Yeah, they didn't want me to sing it. They tried everybody else singing it except me, because I was a new guy, you know. And then they had to ask me to try it because nobody else could do it. Nobody else could do it the high note. <coughs> and then I got it in two takes and it really pissed them off. And then it really pissed them off when it went to number two in the charts and I had my picture on the front of the enemy up on my own. <laughs> Funny as shit. You could hear them seeding in the darkness at night. Suddenly we were very successful. Suddenly we had a load of money. I mean, we didn't actually personally have a load of money, but there was a load of money from the record. We did actually get a bit of money. Dick Mick left the band because he didn't like to be in a commercial band, really. 
it did change, you know, people suddenly saw dollar signs and pound signs and changed people's attitudes, I think. It probably became less sort of altruistic and less idealistic, really. With Silver Machine, the underground went overground, and the sudden influx of hard cash allowed them to mount the ambitious stage show, Space Ritual.